Chair, in your experience in working with businesses, what are sort of the key mistakes entrepreneurs and owner managers make? The most frequent is overtrading. Uh, overtrading is where you become a victim of your success. Essentially, you're able to sell and sell and sell, and you suddenly turn around one day and you're no longer able to supply anybody and you're no longer able to pay anybody because you've run out of cash. And generally, you're then left scrambling, uh, trying to get working capital uh, facilities in place. Uh, and this can have a really detrimental effect because the relationship that you've been building up with your suppliers suddenly gets rockier because you can't pay them. The relationship that you're building up with your customers gets rockier because you can't supply them on time. And obviously, the relationship that you have with staff, particularly if they've got good staff, if they start getting worried, not really the best position to be in. So it's very important to progress at a pace that the business can support and that you have sufficient resources there to support that growth. I think the second thing is, is nearly a feature of that, and it might be where uh, somebody anticipating uh, positive sales actually gets working capital lines in place. Uh, maybe you've moved into a new premises. Um, so you're looking in at a warehouse, you're seeing a lot of racking, and half of it is empty. So the first thing that you do, because it looks lonely, is you fill it with stock, but you don't need it. And it's going to take some time to go out. So you tie up all of your cash in stock. So overstocking is a frequent uh, initial problem. Now generally you work it out, but it's easy to get into and it's a pain to get out of again. Um, my view is that a sale is complete once you've been paid for it. Until you've been paid for it, it isn't a successful sale. And more to the point, if you're not paid on time, you don't get your margin, the margin that you anticipated. So credit control is key. And credit control isn't hostile or aggressive. It's constant communication, uh, on time, all of the time. And you do train your customers. So if they have an expectation that you're going to be on looking for a payment, then they'll have an expectation of writing the check on time. If they have an expectation that they won't hear from you until you're desperate, they'll take advantage of it and they'll hang on until they get the call. And that's very costly. So good credit control is very important. And again, it tends to be something that people learn from experience and somewhat painful experience. Um, behind all of this uh, and controlling the business is administration. Good record keeping, uh, both from the point of view of documentation behind the, the sales, the audit trail, and I think perhaps more importantly, financial management. So generally speaking, most small businesses will use an accounting package. Most of these accounting packages toss out profit and loss, balance sheet, and what have you. You should always look at them not less than a quarterly basis, and ideally you look at them on a monthly basis. And if you're unsure, because it may not be your forte as to what they're telling you, that's what you should use your accountant for, to get you appropriate reports and to talk you through them, really to see that you're staying on track. It's critical that you know what you're doing. More to the point, um, your relationship with your banks or whatever financial institution is going to be much easier if you can show up-to-date financials because apart from the information, it shows that you're in control of the business, uh, which is a key point. Um, I think that the, the other uh, significant problem that small businesses uh, incur is transition. Um, a good person, a principal, an entrepreneur can build a business on the back of their own talents up to A level. And at that stage it's going from small to medium. And frequently what you find is that the, the people platform hasn't been built. And the people platform is who can take on the functions, who can look after the logistics, who can look after the buying, who can take on some of the sales. It can't all stay with an individual, and indeed it can't actually stay with two people, two directors of a business. So you have to build a team, and that takes time, so you have to think ahead. And if you don't do that, again, you go onto the rocks.